Hello everyone! Welcome to the Nano Networking and Molecular Communication module of the Colibri project. My name is Guy Gench and I'm from Boğaziçi University. In this video, we will be covering an advanced level topic under the module, namely the ISI aware modeling and achievable rate analysis of the diffusion channel. We have a classical CVD setting where both the transmitter and receiver nodes are assumed to be spherical bodies. We call each one of these bodies a nano-networking enabled node, in short, NEN. In our setting, time is divided into equal-sized slots. In each slot, one symbol is sent, and each symbol carries one bit of information, either 0 or 1. We denote the bit sent at symbol S as X sub S. For sending the bit 1, the transmitter node releases a predefined number of messenger molecules, MM4 short, into the communication medium. For transmitting the bit 0, no molecules are released. The number of molecules representing a bit is a random variable and is denoted by calligraphic N sub S. Many molecules are released by the transmitter node and absorbed by the receiver node in the same symbol. This qualifies as arriving without delay. We denote the number of undelayed molecules as NSS. They are sent at symbol S and received at symbol S. NSS follows a binomial distribution with the trial and success parameters as calligraphic N sub S and P sub 0. 0 indicates the amount of delay. In this case, this is the undelayed hitting probability. At the receiver node, Demodulation is done by thresholding. We denote the bit received at symbol R as Y sub R and the number of molecules received in that symbol as calligraphic NR. Many molecules experience varying amounts of delay due to Brownian motion. These delayed molecules cause intersymbol interference in the channel, in short, ISI. ISI causes incorrect demodulation at the receiver node. These delayed molecules may be sent at symbol S, but received in symbol R. We denote the number of such molecules as NRS. The number of delayed molecules depends on two factors, the number of molecules released at time S but received before time R, and delayed hitting probability P sub I, where the delay is I symbols. Below we have the binomial distribution for the number of molecules experiencing I symbols of delay as denoted in the superscript S plus I. The delayed reception probabilities PI are exponentially decaying with increasing delay. This means that the number of delayed molecules also decreases significantly when the delay is high. Therefore, we can find an integer eta such that the number of molecules experiencing more than eta delay are negligible. We assume that a transmission is only significantly affected by the molecules of eta previous symbols. So, we represent the number of molecules received at time r as a sum of eta plus 1 independent and binomially distributed random variables. The demodulation probability of a received bit depends on most recent eta plus 1 bits. The equation below shows the demodulation probability of the received bit being 0. 1 minus this quantity gives the demodulation probability for the bit 1. Model verification by presenting graphs with overlapping simulation and model results is not rigorous enough. For verifying the model that we have just presented, we want to compare the conditional demodulation probabilities obtained from the simulations with those derived from our proposed model under every possible parameter combination. Here, y sub r is the rth demodulated bit at the receiver node, and x sub r minus eta plus 1 through r are the last eta sent bits, including the rth one at the transmitter node. For model verification, we use Pearson's chi-square test. The model is tested with extensive simulations under realistic conditions. Now, let's discuss the success of this model. First, we discuss the ratio of good fits with respect to eta. In the three graphs below, alpha denotes the significance level of the Pearson's chi-squared goodness test. A smaller alpha value stands for a stricter test. We observe that the model's chance of obtaining a successful fit over all parameter combinations increases as eta is increased. Also, the ratio of good fits drops for lower eta 
when the communicating bodies are larger. In the literature, many researchers assume that the transmission is only affected by the previous bit, that is, eta is equal to 1. Here, we see that this assumption results in poor overlap between model and simulation results. Next, we discuss the ratio of good fits with respect to eta and distance. The three graphs below show that decreasing eta fails for shorter distances between the nanonetworking bodies much rapidly. We again observe that eta has to be large to ensure a reliable model that has a significant overlap with the simulation results. Remember the mutual information and channel capacity formulations introduced earlier in the course. These formulations are correct when we are sending only a single bit or whenever the channel is memoryless, that is, a transmission is not affected by the previous bits. In the case of consecutive transmissions, leftover molecules from the previous bits affect the current transmission. Therefore, the channel has memory. In this case, we use the mutual information rate formulation. The maximum of the mutual information rate is called the achievable rate, which is analogous to the channel capacity. We observe that the mutual information is maximized when the bits 0 and 1 are transmitted with equal probability. For short distances, the communication is more robust as indicated by the high-intensity areas in the graphs. But why do we design an analytical model when we can perform simulations? There are two reasons for it. The first one is molecule buildup. Our simulator is particle tracking based. In a particle tracking based simulator, molecule buildup is inevitable since the molecules have positive survival probability, especially for farther distances. The graph on the left shows the buildup of messenger molecules in the simulation. The second reason for preferring an analytical model is the execution time. With an analytical model, the time to calculate the demodulation probabilities and the achievable rate is independent of the communication medium parameters. The graph on the right shows the performance of the simulation compared to the analytical model. With the simulations, the execution time grows super linearly with respect to the distance between the communicating bodies. However, the execution time is constant for the analytical model, which is around 14 seconds. And that concludes our lecture on the ISI aware modeling and achievable rate analysis of the diffusion channel. Thank you for listening and see you next time.